Welcome to Keep Smiling, the e-commerce customer experience podcast. Nathan Hirsch is a lifelong entrepreneur and currently the CEO of Ecom Balance and Outsource School. Nathan started his first business in 2009 from his college dorm room, buying and selling textbooks on Amazon. In the next five years, he expanded into other products and scaled it to over 25 million in total sales. After scaling his Amazon business and hiring hundreds of virtual assistants from sites like Upwork and Fiverr, he and his business partner, Connor Gillivan, co-founded and scaled FreeUp.net with an initial $5,000 investment to 12 million in yearly sales. FreeUp was acquired in 2019 by The Hoth. In 2020, Nathan co-founded Outsource School to offer his exact online hiring and management methods to business owners looking to build a remote team. Nathan scaled Outsource School to hundreds of members and it continues to grow today. In 2021, Nathan co-founded Ecom Balance, an online bookkeeping service to help e-commerce business owners better master their finances and bookkeeping. After interviewing over 100 e-commerce business owners, it was clear that there was a need for a better solution in the market and Nathan decided to tackle it and the company is growing quickly. Hello listeners, and thank you for being here with us. I'm your host, Ty Walters, and joining me today is our featured guest, Nathan Hirsch of Ecom Balance. Welcome, and thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks so much for, for having me. I heard about you a couple of years ago, back when you were running free up, back when it was three E's and not two before the acquisition, so congrats on that. Uh, but my manager at the time, uh, brought it up to me. We were expanding a certain area of our business and he's like, free up's the place to look. There's e-commerce experts there. Uh, they're easy to add onto the team. We found some very high quality experts that bolstered our team. It was exactly what we needed at the time. And a few years later, uh, after launching Seller Smile and running that for a while, uh, we actually participated in free up from the other side of the marketplace. We became a service provider for someone that was looking for an e-commerce customer service expert. So we helped them uh, organize and, and manage their systems and it was a great experience. So I just wanted to personally say thank you as a user from both ends of the system that you built. Yeah, no, I appreciated that. Free up was kind of a, a wild ride. It was it was funny. So my wife and I, at the time we were dating and we were living in an apartment and we got robbed. And so we moved out of that place and we were living with her parents and I started free up on her couch. We were Amazon sellers and we kind of saw the writing on the wall that drop shipping was going to be as uh, lucrative as it was for the first five years we were doing it. Um, and we had been drop shipping since college and we had all these VAs and freelancers and people in the e-commerce space and e-com was just starting to boom with courses and coaches and consultants and Facebook groups and all this stuff there. So a lot of people were getting into the game and, and all these new businesses had to hire people. And we had to be one of the first e-commerce service providers. And we we scaled that business for four years before being acquired. And it was uh, it was quite a ride. It was kind of our first experience building our own website, our own brand, SEO, partnerships, B2B, and uh, a great experience. As I remember, it was it had an e-commerce centricity about it. And that was exactly, I think, what e-commerce sellers needed. There was all these special little services like Amazon pay-per-click that you could maybe find on other marketplaces, but maybe not to such a refined degree. So it was one of the reasons I think a lot of sellers had success and continued because there's so many things to do. You just can't do it all on your own, especially as you're expanding. So um, Nathan, you, free up was part of your life for a while. And like you mentioned, you saw this opportunity. And tell us about kind of that transition into e-com balance. Did you see a similar opportunity while at free up operating that business? Uh, no. So for free up for four years, it was free up and nothing but free up. And I don't think I came up with one new business idea while I was running free up. It, it was our hundred uh, percent focus as we grew it. And the, the sale kind of came about. One of our clients reached out to us and said, Hey, we buy businesses. We don't start them. We, we want to get into the freelance space. We use free up. We like free up. Would you be interested in being acquired? And next was the, the most stressful six months of my life as we were going through due diligence and all of that. And when we finally sold free up, the original plan was to, to take a, a year or two off and travel the world and, and, and just live life. And I didn't even think I'd see my partner, uh, my business partner, Connor, for uh, a year, but we sold it in November, 2019. And months later, the pandemic hit. So we were completely out of free up within 60 days. That was the plan. We didn't want to stay there. And, um, from there, we were stuck at home with no business to run and nothing to do. And a buddy of mine, uh, Nate McAllister, said, hey, why don't you sell a course on hiring? And I'd never sold a course before. So 
I, I we launched Outsource School early in the pandemic, um, and, and we still run Outsource School to this day. It's kind of a passive income stream for people that are a passive income stream for us, but it helps people uh, with their hiring process. It's the exact interview questions, onboarding, training, and managing that people plug into their business. And uh, again, that didn't take up. 40 hours of our week. So we spent the next year or so just brainstorming with a, a lot of bad ideas thrown in there. And we kept coming back to the finance space. We, we wanted to do something there. We didn't know what. We didn't know if we wanted to sell a course or coach people. And we consulted a little bit, but we really hated being consultants. But the common theme of us consulting was before we could help people make decisions in their business, we had to help re them revamp their monthly bookkeeping process. And that kind of gave us the idea to start a monthly bookkeeping business um, targeted for e-commerce sellers, which we launched beginning of this year. And a uh, sister brand we launched a few months ago called Accounts Balance, which is for um, non-e-commerce businesses. So it really came from the pandemic and doing some consulting and brainstorming after we sold free up. As an entrepreneur that builds a successful business and not, not only builds one, but that exits one, you've seen so many different stages. You understand business from a perspective most don't. And undoubtedly those skills, you, you can deploy them at will. So as this entrepreneur who's maybe sitting on the sidelines with nothing to do, you have so much skill that you have to offer, so much context. Uh, we talked about before we started recording a little bit about customer service and, and your passion or your focus on that. Where does that come from or did that develop over time throughout multiple or some of these businesses? Yeah. So I haven't had a lot of real jobs. Most of my jobs were like high school jobs or, or internships at the beginning of college. I started my Amazon business sophomore year of college and quit my internship shortly after that. But the internship that that I had the longest for three or four years with, with Firestone, like the, uh, the tire place. And I was a salesperson there and they have really great customer service. And they taught me everything about customer service from the the mindset that like if someone's unhappy, you just you just make it right. You refund them. You give them credit. You give them that free oil change. Like it's it's all about the long term play, less about making money in the short term. And that's kind of the approach that I took with free up. Like if a client was unhappy, we, we would get them a new freelancer, give them credit. I'd refund their invoice. No no problem. If um, same thing on the freelancer side when we were building up our database of VAs and freelancers, we heard a lot of bad feedback about Upwork and Fiverr and how people were just another number there. And we tried to tweak it where our, our internal customer service team was not only supporting their clients, but also uh, supporting our clients, but also supporting the freelancers and the VAs to make it easy for them and make it feel like we were serving them and not talking down to them or telling them what to do. And and there were times where the client would say one thing and the freelancer would say the other and the freelancer was a good freelancer and we would just make them both happy and lose a little bit of money in the process, but keep the freelancer billing on the platform, keep the client bill, um, billing hours and all that. And, and that's kind of the, the mentality that we've had. And th there's other tweaks that I learned there, like responding quickly at Firestone, you have to answer the phone within three rings. And they, were, they would have people just call the stores randomly. And if you didn't pick up with three rings, you'd get a strike. And if you did pick up, they'd give you 25 bucks or something. So stuff like that, that relates more to emails. Like you got to respond to people quickly. And even with Econ Balance, the, the solution isn't drop what you're doing and work on what the client sends you, but you can respond to the email, acknowledge you got the email, say, hey, I'll get back to you within 48 hours. That's a way better experience than just ignoring the email for three days until you get to it. So stuff like that, I, I kind of took everything I learned at Firestone and kind of applied it to originally my Amazon business because we had great reviews there. And when we were drop shipping, the number one thing was like, don't let Amazon suspend you. Keep five stars. If you got a negative review, we were really good at getting people to take it down. Um, moving to free up, we, we were building our brand and we wanted to have that great reputation for clients, but also freelancers. And even now to Econ Balance, a lot of people that knew me from free up were the beta clients of Econ Balance because they knew yes, I'm figuring out this new business and there, there's tweaks and everything that we need to do to, to make this a perfect bookkeeping service. But they know at the end of the day that that customer service that hopefully I'm known for is going to, to be a big part of any business that I start. And to me, any business that you start, that, that core needs to be customer service because you can't compete with multi-billion dollar or multi-million dollar corporations on marketing or on client acquisition or even on software sometimes, but you can always compete on customer service. So that can be your differentiator. 
it sounds like it was baked into your philosophy or your psyche from that early experience. I've had similar experiences. You just carry those lessons on with you and you can't imagine interacting with customers or people in any other way because it, it just sets that bar. We talk about all the time how Amazon sets the bar for e-commerce in general. Seven days a week responses to your customers, no days off, no holidays. And um, it can grind on some people, but it's the new expectation. It's the new market. It's the new economy. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that customer service is plays such a central role in anything that you're doing. You're absolutely right. It's it's a the people to people business. It's how you make them feel. It's how you get that word of mouth. We we uh, attempt to align with sellers who have that same philosophy towards their customers. Some sellers are a little bit more transactional. They're they're a little bit more focused on that dollar figure. Um, so maybe that's a good transition. Uh, customer service is. Uh, a little bit removed from finances when it comes to running a business, but there are ways in which they intersect. Sometimes we counsel a seller on how to approach a, a refund policy. At which level are we doing refunds or returns? How can we monetize our returns? Things like that. At Ecom Balance, are you working through those types of decisions with sellers, or can you tell me more about that? Um, so we're not going into like their their business and doing consulting on that level. Um, like a good example of this, as we're we're so we charge clients on the first, and we get their books by the fifteenth each month. And when we did a beta round, we gave our initial clients two free months with the agreement. Bear with us. We're, we're hiring people. We're training. We're building process. We don't know what the hiccups are going to be, but there are going to be hiccups, and we're going to make it right and, and bear with us. And over the first few months, there were times where we couldn't get someone their books by the fifteenth. We needed a few extra days. We needed till the seventeenth or the nineteenth or whatever it was. And without the client even asking, we just threw in a fifty dollar credit there to say, "Hey, thanks for bearing with us. Your books are going to be two days late. Here's a fifty dollar credit." And the the initial response was just that, like, wow, I can't believe you're doing this. I never heard of a, a bookkeeping company that 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 does something like that. And oh, some entrepreneurs might be thinking, man, that sucks. That's 50 bucks out of my pocket. I look at it as, hey, this is someone who's hopefully working with us month to month going forward. I don't care about the 50 bucks. I would much rather have a long-term client and build that long-term relationship and have the person trust me knowing that if something goes wrong, I'm going to make it right. And that's going to keep that client loyalty. And Going back to Firestone, I saw this in action. I remember um, like going through their training where they they kind of just say make everything right up front and having people who were waiting hours for their oil change or the mechanic messed up something in their car or we some something didn't go the right way. And because Firestone just made it right, gave them their, their thing for free or lost a little bit of money up front, that customer would come back. Four months later, eight months later, two years later, and that kind of changed my whole philosophy on business. So for me, it's like whenever we do something for a client, what is that perfect experience? And if that perfect experience isn't met, we have to do something to, to make it right. And if you just turn in something late, that doesn't make the client whole. It's, hey, how do you make the client whole and, and then some? So with free up, if a freelancer would quit, we would cover all replacement costs for a new freelancer and give them credit towards that freelancer. That's making them whole. That's putting them hopefully in a better position, even though it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but a, a better position going forward. And that's how you kind of build loyalty. So that's kind of my, my overall um, customer service philosophy, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's not short-term sacrifice for the long-term gain. You hear lifetime value. You're trying to drive that up by taking a little bit of a loss. But you see the big picture. You see down the road. And that's really what matters to the finances of your business and the happiness of your customer as well. So, Nate, uh, I used to be a seller myself years ago, not active anymore. We had My parents ran a uh, kitchen and bath remodeling company. So there was all this extra granite laying around. We ended up fashioning those into coasters and sending them into FBA. And my experience, it was great to learn how to sell. And there's all this aspirational uh, material out there for, you know, become an e-commerce seller, retire from the nine to five. So I, I had my own attempt at that and I learned so much. And one of the things that came out of that was the difficulty of the accounting that came with the activities around our business. Not experts in accounting, but maybe e-commerce experts, it was still a challenge. The uh, Amazon seller is sort of a new thing in business, so maybe there's less helpful resources. So do you find sellers in a similar position? Maybe they're, they've been selling for one to three years. They've been kind of doing it 
themselves. They're not quite sure. It, it, does a seller like that qualify for your services or are you looking for them to be maybe a little bit larger of a size after some more years? Yeah, I mean, our our minimum is two forty nine a month. So, and we have clients that charge that we charge two thousand dollars a month. So it's a wide range. Um, I, I mean, the, the way that I look at bookkeeping is no one should, no entrepreneur should be doing their own bookkeeping. First of all, it's not a good use of your time. If you're looking to grow your business and you're spending time in your books, your time can be better spent launching new product, marketing, sales, whatever it is. Um, if you're a serious entrepreneur, you should be hiring that bookie from day one. Maybe someone cheaper than two forty nine a month or something, but someone should be doing your bookkeeping. And it's just one of those things in my mind. Any new business I start, hiring a bookkeeper from day one is just a business cost that I have to factor into to my initial planning. And bookkeeping is a lot cheaper than a lot of the other things you, you'll buy in, in business anyway. So that's kind of my thought. Like, could you start with someone cheaper and move up to econ balance? Sure, but usually if your business is going to go under, it's not because you're spending 250 bucks a month on bookkeeping and the being able to make good decisions every month, that's what's going to be the difference between success and failure. A lot of people think of bookkeeping to, to pay tax at the end of the year or get funding or get investment or sell your company. A lot of businesses don't get investments or sell their company. And yeah, making taxes less stressful is great too. But the real reason to do bookkeeping is every month to be able to make good decisions based on what the numbers are telling you. And there are sellers out there that are selling five products, but four of them are not profitable. And they have no idea because their books aren't segmented. They're not looking at their books every single month. And it's tough to make decisions just on, on gut or by money going to your bank account. You have to make it on profit and loss statements, balance sheet and cash flow statements. That's the better way of doing things because you actually know where the money's going, how much you have. And of course, sellers get into this business with sometimes an idea of an exit, maybe to be acquired. There's a lot of brand aggregator activity out there, uh, or maybe just to make sure that they're going to be able to have the extra money that they think they have to be able to pay the bills if it's more of a lifestyle business. So that's kind of a, a brilliant idea to me. Like every month you should be looking at this and that's absolutely correct. Tell me though, uh, a typical entrepreneur that's operating in the e-commerce space, maybe Amazon, maybe Shopify, what are some of the numbers that they should be looking at on this monthly cadence or what are some of the metrics that Ecom Balance supplies? Yeah, I mean, uh, segmentation is a big thing. So if you're selling on three different marketplaces, Amazon Europe, Amazon US, Amazon Japan, you want to know what your margins are for each marketplace, just like you want to know per SKU. You want to know what your margins are per SKU. Um, a big thing for monthly bookkeeping, and again, your, your process should be the month ends by the 10th of the 15th, you get income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and you should have a meeting on your calendar every single month to go through those numbers. And that's when you make decisions. Well, in that meeting, you should be comparing your numbers from this month to last month and to the same month last year, if you've been in business longer than a year. And that's where you're going to see, hey, my payroll is going up, but my sales are flat. Or, hey, we're selling more, but our margins are going down. That's the, the comparing you should do. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff is standard, like revenue at um, net net profit um, margins on each product, like that's pretty standard for each business. It's not like Econ Balance has some special metric, but putting it in a format that you can understand and compare and make decisions on, that's what's important. When an entrepreneur comes to you, uh, are they? What's the typical status, or is there one? Do you see an entrepreneur? They're doing a pretty good job, but they're missing a few points here and there, or is it less organized than you'd hoped it'd be? Yeah, I mean, it hits all over. Like you'll get people who are caught up and they're, they're, or you get people that haven't done their books in two years. So, I mean, with Econ Balance, we have a pricing form people give us. Um, and then we get access to their current books. And from there, we give them a quote that quotes two things. It's a fixed price for any kind of setup, catch up, cleanup. And then it's a fixed price on what their monthly price is going forward. And we usually do a, a month free. And if people mention this podcast, we'll actually do um, two months free. But that's what people can expect. And I mean, if your books are clean and we can hit the ground running, great. There shouldn't be much of a cleanup cost, if any. And I mean, if you haven't done your, your books in a year or whatever, our goal is to have a, a fair price. Obviously, it, it costs money to, to go through previous months, and that's a lot of work, but we're much more interested in, in a long-term relationship than we are in making a, a quick buck off the, the, the ketchup or cleanup. So that's kind of how we look at it. I have a question from someone on the Seller Smile team. Uh, they're a global traveler. They work remotely, and uh, so they're a little bit more aware of the internationality of our business. 
how is it at Ecom Balance? Are you working with U.S. based businesses only? Are you working with international entrepreneurs who are also selling in the U.S.? What does that look like? We don't do tax. So you need your own tax person, whether it's a CPA in the US or a foreign tax person, or whoever it is. But bookkeeping is bookkeeping. I mean, there's generally accepted accounting principles. We have clients all over the world. We we communicate directly with their tax person and make sure we're all on the same page. And that's an important part of it. And during integration, we, we get that contact information. But I mean, we, we do monthly bookkeeping for clients all over the world. Um, like I said, bookkeeping is bookkeeping. I think I've been doing my bookkeeping well up to this point, uh, but maybe I'm thinking about selling my business now and maybe I want an expert, second pair of eyes or whatever. Do you do that type of service where you're not coming on as the monthly bookkeeper, but more as like the pre-sale validation or prep for that type of business? Yeah, we, we can handle one-time projects. Earlier this year, we were focused more on monthly clients and we still are, but now that we have a cleanup team, um, we can handle those projects. And th- that's also a good question for your accountant too, is should you be in cash or accrual basis? A lot of times, if you're going to sell your company and it's an e-com business, you might want to transition your cash books to accrual because that's going to give you a much better idea of how much you're making each month. It's going to help you get a higher multiple. Buyers are going to look for that. So they, there, there's one part of it that, hey, you, you, it's tough to sell a business if you don't have clean books. So you might want to hire a bookkeeper to do that. Um, getting a second set of eyes is great too, but you might want to switch it over to a accrual basis before you even start the, the selling process. Nathan, we talked a little bit more about accounts balance, how you're expanding, so to speak, from e-com balance into SaaS into other areas of business. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And I'm interested to hear in some of the unique ways these types of businesses are different. Yeah, I mean, e-commerce tends to to be the most complicated bookkeeping. You have inventory, you've got Amazon fees, you have to use a tool called A2X to connect from Amazon to to QuickBooks. Um, So e-commerce is definitely more complicated. Um, I think what we kind of learned is, hey, if we can do e-com and we have good processes for e-com, which took us months and months to create, um, we can handle non-e-commerce businesses. And we were getting referrals from non-e-commerce businesses or for non-e-commerce businesses. So we created a sister brand and a team just to handle those. Um, I mean, we like to, if you're talking about like building a SaaS business in, in general, like we, we've never really owned a SaaS, but we like to have, um, software behind anything we build. So FreeUp was a marketplace and we had the portal that would keep the marketplace together. Freelancers had their account, clients had their account, admin and billing in the middle. With Econ Balance, we have a client portal that is billing and affiliates and we, we upload reports in there and we'll kind of build out features as we go. So I don't think we've ever launched like a straight up SaaS service. Um, and, and that's not what Econ Balance is. We're a bookkeeping software that is, or a bookkeeping service that has software behind it. Um, but yeah, we've kind of tailored it so we can handle very complex e-commerce businesses, but also handle that six-figure agency that, that needs monthly books to make decisions as well. One of the ways that Seller Smile has changed is we started off Amazon only, but then as sellers, frankly, brought these other marketplaces and other sub-services to us, that's what expanded our services. So we needed to learn Shopify, we needed to learn Walmart or eBay. Can you talk to some of the ways that this business has shifted over the years and what you've learned? And do um, you have any tips? Because sellers are asking us all the time, you see so many clients, tell us what to do or tell us the best strategies here. So speak to that, please. Yeah. So, I mean, how our processes changed in the past year, because we've been in business a year, we didn't have any processes when we started. So uh, a key for launching any business from our side is we're very upfront with our initial customers. Hey, please be a beta tester. We'll give you some kind of concession. In our case, it was two months of free bookkeeping, but bear with us. There'll be slight delays. We're going to communicate. We're going to make sure you're taken care of, but we're going to have to train people and build processes and processes will break. And, and we want feedback along the way to, to help make this the, the best experience. So that's kind of step one. Step two is figuring out everything that, that we need, the kind of the client drawing board from the second a client finds out about us to how we get them a quote, to how we get all the access we need, to how we, um, how we actually clean up their books and then do their books on a monthly basis, we we outlined it step by step. And then we put people through it and broke it a million times and use that to kind of tweak it and make each process better and, and take feedback from our clients. Along the way, you're also experimenting with software. I mentioned our client portal, minimum viable product, product with any new software, there's bugs and stuff you got to figure out. 
But there's also like A2X I mentioned, uh, which is a connector from e-commerce platforms to QuickBooks. We experimented with alternatives that, that did not work very well, that were very buggy, that didn't give accurate data. So part of it was adjusting that software to, to find the right software. And, and there's other tools we use like Rewind to, to back up people's QuickBooks accounts, things like that, that you kind of add in and tweak as you go. So that's really our process. And as clients continue to go through it, you just continue to tweak it and continue to perfect it till you get to a point now where, where our core processes are built. And now there's more like specific SOPs. Hey, if a client sells on Etsy, on Etsy, let's make this process more efficient for our bookkeepers. And that's kind of how we approach any business is, is being upfront, having an initial process, and then using those initial clients to, to fine tune it. It sounds like um, a build in public type of scenario you're sharing a lot. And I think there's a certain type of client that really resonates with that because they can feel like they're a part of the process. They're helping you build it and they know they're getting that concierge personal white glove service from you because it's a it's a startup like you said you don't have that large fortune 100 corporate structure with all the power and money that comes with it you're you're a smaller startup you're trying to do what you can and it's just a different uh difference in in that situation so nate let me uh, ask you this is something we touched on a little bit before the call as a serial entrepreneur uh multiple exits from different businesses, multiple businesses today. What's that like now as a foster parent? I, I'm assuming at some stage of those businesses, you, you were just a single guy, maybe with a little bit more time, effort, and energy and youth, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, I'm a father, a new father as well, and it's it just changes it a little bit. And I'm interested to hear how has running an e-com balance and everything else been different? Yeah, congrats on being a new dad as well. Um, yeah, I mean, fostering, my wife gets all the credit. It's something she always wanted to do. And I didn't really know anything about fostering until I, I kind of dove into it. And there are a lot of trainings and, and certifications. We spent about nine months um, and all that. I mean, Free Up was a, just a great experience. Like selling Free Up changed our, our lives, both financially, but also just freedom wise. And it also let let Connor, my business partner and I just be picky on whatever businesses we wanted to start and choose businesses that allow for time on weekends and holidays and not the 24 hour hustle. It also like our Amazon business at free up, we started with $5,000. We put a little bit more of investment in econ balance. So it allows us to hire more people up front and speed up the timeline and not have to do every little thing. So part of it's kind of evolving as an entrepreneur, part of it's getting older um, and learning to, to delegate and to like this weekend, I didn't check my email. I didn't check Slack. I don't know if I would have been able to do that um, four years ago. So there's certain things like that. And, and when you add other things to the to the table, whether it's um, if it's family or personal issues, or in our case, a foster kid, it only adds additional time that you need to block away from work. And, and it can be a good thing too. So I think I, I kind of credit um, free up for, for allowing that to happen. And, and obviously my wife for figuring out a, a good way to, to give back there. And um, we also, we foster teens. So a little bit different than having a, a newborn kid. Uh, um, we have a, 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 a 16 year old boy that's in high school right now, and he's doing after school activities and there's a little bit more like allowance than teaching them how to apply to jobs and life skills than just kind of being on call 24 uh, seven with a bottle or whatever. Although who knows, maybe we'll, we'll have our own bio kids in the future or adopt or, or whatever, but um, that's kind of been our experience. Thank you for sharing uh, with all the entrepreneurial activity that's happening. They have an excellent example for that next phase of their life when they're looking for a job or just looking, you know, what to do next. Um, yeah. Parenting is, is um, it's a, part-time or full-time job, depending on how you look at it. And I'm happy to hear that it's going well for you. Finally, I'd like to hear what's on the horizon for e-com balance or accounts balance for that matter. Do you have any new features coming out? Are you aiming to offer any new sub-services or, or different segments of business? What's next? Right now, we're focused on monthly bookkeeping. We might add tax and other stuff in the future. But I mean, right now, we're, we kind of have that client process down. And it's all about brand awareness and adding more clients and hiring more bookkeepers. And down the line, we can add other stuff. But we we feel like we just got to a good place with our team and training and how long it takes us to get a client going and all of that. And, and although we'll keep fine tuning it right now, it's a, we can, Connor and I get to turn on our, our marketing engines for a bit and see if we can scale this thing like we did free up. Thank you so much for sharing. It's a pleasure to have you. It's an honor to have this discussion with you. If you're listening and you're a seller, don't wait too long. Start doing your books right. 
Ecom Balance is a great solution for that. They're experts. They've iterated through this process. So you know you're getting high quality and it's not starting at $500 or $1,000 a week, a month. You can start small and you know you're growing your business right looking at the right numbers. So it's gonna be better in the future. You don't want a business that's messy later. Even if it's grown, you want it set up right from the beginning. If you'd like to find out more about Nate and his businesses, Ecom Balance or Accounts Balance, you can go to the show notes of this episode. We'll provide links to all of that here. And as a special free bonus for listeners, Nathan is offering 30% off outsource school or two free months of bookkeeping with Ecom Balance. And check the show notes for the details there. Nathan, anything else you'd like to say to our listeners before we end our discussion today? No, thanks so much for having me. Feel free to connect with me, Nathan Hirsch, on any social media channel and wishing Seller Smile the best of luck. It's been cool just watching you guys throughout the years and I'm sure we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you so much, Nate. It's been a pleasure. Nathan's offering a free bonus for listeners. Receive 30% off Outsource School and or two free months of bookkeeping with Ecom Balance when you sign up and mention the Keep Smiling podcast by Seller Smile. To find the show notes, which include links to the resources and offers we discussed today, go to sellersmile.com forward slash 034. And if you found value in this conversation, hit subscribe and you'll get the next straight to your device. Thanks again and keep smiling.